Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Gentech PC product showcase. Today we're going to be covering the brand new ASUS G752 gaming laptop. This is going to be a long full detailed review so go ahead and get comfortable and we'll start things off with the unboxing. So for those who might have come across this video by chance more so than on purpose, in summary the G752 is going to be ASUS's Republic of Gamers high-end 17 inch gaming laptop. The series started a long time ago with the G70 and has kept going ever since. As we go through the unboxing, we see that we get to our power adapter here and we'll get a close up so you can see the wattage specifications from that power adapter. And moving into our main center compartment, we've got the actual laptop, of course. Packed a little bit differently here. We don't have the foam inserts on the left and right sides like we see with a lot of the other boxes. Now there's not much left to the rest of the unboxing. We have one compartment left in the center. And we have some cable management and of course warranty information and product information in there. Actually no drivers discs like we used to get. That goes to show that getting online to download the drivers is becoming a more commonplace way to handle that. Now with the unboxing already done and out of the way, it's time to go ahead and power on the G752 for the first time. On the first boot, we'll go ahead and jump into the system BIOS, and that way we can look at some of the hardware and features that the BIOS offers. So the BIOS on the G752 are pretty minimalistic. We have our five tabs across the top covering the main advanced boot security and of course the save and exit. There's not a whole lot of reason to come in here from stock unless you needed to make any kind of specific changes to the BIOS settings. The most common of those being probably changing your boot device order in case you need to work on the computer you might want to boot from another device. Maybe change the AHCI to RAID or to even legacy if you're working on a older operating system and experimenting. And you can always set a BIOS password or something as well for extra security. Now it's time to see how the G752 measures up as far as size and weight. With the laptop on the scale, the laptop alone comes in at 9 pounds and 12 ounces. Of course, you're going to carry the power adapter around with any kind of high-powered gaming laptop, and you'll need to figure in the extra weight of that as well. The power adapter comes in at about 2 pounds even, so with the previous weight that gives us 11 pounds and 12 ounces of total carry weight. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and zoom in and start touring around the unit. We have a very large palm rest area with the individual left and right click buttons separate from the mouse pad. Those are always nicer than the ones built in. A few stickers on the left side to notate the hardware inside of the system. We have a chiclet style low profile backlit keyboard. Our power button in the top right hand corner. Several extra keys at the top left side, and these are useful for preset functions and macros. Some of the more notable features about the keyboard here is going to be that it is a 30 key rollover, so you can have up to 30 keys pressed at the same time and they all register with the system. And it's anti-ghosting, so it's supposed to be very fast response time. And we have that backlit color. It's only a single color, it's not RGB, so it's not multicolor. Focusing on our preset keys at the top there, the very first one is going to be your broadcasting button. That'll preset to open up the XSplit broadcaster, which is of course a very popular streaming client for gaming. And real quick, we'll go ahead and flip off the lights here. Now we can get a much better view of the backlighting from the keyboard. So it's lit around the keys, but of course the actual lettering comes through as well. All right, now we're at the stage of the review where it's time to go over our connectivity that we have offered from the laptop. 
At this angle, it's also a good chance to see that we have a matte screen. This is a non-glossy screen. So starting on the right side of the laptop from the left, we have three 3.5 millimeter audio connections. One's for your headphone out, one's for your microphone in, and one is for your SPDIF digital output. The next connection on there is going to be that brand new USB 3.1 port with Thunderbolt technology behind it. Then we have two traditional USB 3 ports, mini display port, HDMI, RJ45 for our networking purposes, and of course the DC power charging port. As we now make it around to the rear of the unit, back here there is no connectivity. This is purely cooling and a little bit of decoration. Notice the orange and black coloring scheme on the back. Just a heads up in case you spot one of these in public. The orange and black designates that you're on a model that actually features the GTX 980 mobile video card. If you have a lower video card configuration, it's actually going to be black in color instead. Small attention to details here with the brushed aluminum LCD lid. And of course, with the lights dimmed out, some of that lighting will come through. You can see the Republic of Gamers logo and our little accent lights as well. Now we go ahead and continue over to the left side. We're starting from the left again with our Kennington lock port, which is going to be for locking down the laptop, two more USB 3.0 ports, our optical drive with a dedicated eject button, so you can eject it without any kind of software keys, and you'll notice the small pinhole opening for an emergency eject as well. And then the very last is going to be the SD card reader. Now strictly for demonstration purposes, we'll do a couple of laps all the way around the laptop with the lid closed, just to give you a good video review of how it looks, the size, the shape, and the form factor. Now since seeing something in person and holding it versus uh, seeing it on video is quite different, to see the scale we have a quarter on the screen and a tape measure so we can take measurements. So the rear of the laptop is close to the two inch mark and the front of the laptop is about the inch and a half mark. So we have that traditional gaming laptop wedged form factor where the front is lower than the rear and we have a pretty large standoff to get the bottom of the laptop off the desk so the cool air can get into the system. Now while we're talking about cooling, the other thing is how loud is that cooling system? So for that, the only way to show that on video really is our traditional test that we do, the sound test. So we have a sound meter and we'll be moving that around, of course with the system under load and also idle. So we're doing our idle test right now. Just a quick jump over to the device manager so we can see how the configuration looks. You can see our disk drives. We have the NVIDIA GTX 980 mobile for our video card. The Intel i7 6700HQ for our CPU. For the network connectivity, we have Realtek for the wired connectivity and we have Intel for our wireless. For those interested in the screen details, this is a 1920 by 1080p, 16 by 9 aspect ratio screen, and here is the information on the panel. One of the features that you're probably going to be curious about is does it support the NVIDIA G-Sync? And yes, it does. We do have that option available and currently enabled. A couple of more quick benchmarks before we get to the gaming test. Here's our Crystal Disk Mark scores for the C drive.
and a look at the Gaming Center software that ASUS comes preloaded on the system with. Our software center here does have profiles available that'll help you keep certain setups. Like if you want to have a broadcasting setup versus a gaming setup versus a productivity setup, instead of having to manually go and change everything every time, you can go ahead and set up each individual profile to work the way you want it to and just quickly choose between those different profiles. Again, the M1 through 5 keys that we saw earlier while looking at the keyboard aren't the same five macro keys that we're referencing in the macro software. Now we're starting off our gaming benchmark section. We have those running currently. Before we look at the scores, we're going to go ahead and go back to the sound test. This gives us a good chance to take a look at how much louder the system got from idle state versus a load state. Again, these figures are always the worst case scenario, putting a recording device right next to the exhaust in a quiet room. The best way to compare this to other systems is just to watch other reviews where we've done the same test in the same manner, and you can get the relative difference between similar systems. Okay, and while we're still running the benchmarks, we'll go ahead and break our next testing tool, and that's going to be the wireless thermometer. And we'll take a look at the heat coming out of the exhaust system and the operational areas of the laptop as well. Now the key things to look for in this test is actually that you want to see high numbers in the back where the exhaust is because that means the heat is being released from the system and over in the operational areas such as the touchpad and palm rest area you want to see lower numbers because those are the areas that your hands will be resting and you don't want to get the sweaty palms from the heat coming through the system. Interestingly enough, if you see heat numbers show up on the keyboard area, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Some systems do use the keyboard to some extent to help ventilate. And since your hands don't usually rest on the keyboard, you don't really feel that heat being released from that area. Now we can go ahead and get our 3D Mark 11 scores up. We have a performance score of 11,174. Down below we have the GPU-Z information for the GTX 980 Mobile. You can see that's the 4GB GDDR5 version. And moving over to our temperature test, the maximum temperature we got on our CPU was 70 degrees Celsius, which is really good. And then as we get down to the GPU temperatures, the GTX 980 Mobile pulled a 65 degrees Celsius maximum temperature, which is actually a pretty outstanding figure for a gaming laptop with a top-end video card. Now we're moving into our next benchmark result, which is going to be the Fire Strike benchmark. Our score was 8,289. Again, the same GPU-Z information to show we're running the same test, same hardware. The temperatures during the fire strike test, the CPU actually came in a little bit cooler this time, 69 degrees Celsius max, and the video card temperatures, those came in a little bit lower as well at 62 degrees Celsius. Pretty amazing since fire strike is a, an intensive benchmark. So another thing we want to convey is going to be the sound system, so we'll show you the volume levels. <laughs>
All right, so it's time for us to move into the final part of our review, which is always the minor disassembly of the system. So we have a unit flipped over to the bottom. What you're seeing here is one of the things the G752 features, which is the 3D vapor chamber and the dust release technology for better cooling. That's one of the reasons we might have seen good cooling temperatures, but more so this is really going to affect ownership where our systems build up dust over time and start to perform worse. In this case, the G752 should perform better longer. So for the bottom component access, we actually do not have to remove a dozen screws all around. We can just get to the singular screw in the center, which is protected by that rubber flap. And then we get immediate access to system RAM slots, which we have two vacant right now. Our two and a half inch drive on the bottom left. And then we're also only a few screws away from getting access to our solid state disks. So we have four screws holding on that metal plate, and then that's gonna reveal the M2 form factor solid state disks. These are using the PCI Express interface. So all in all, the G752 gives the users easy access to these upgradable components. So you can upgrade your drives, your solid state disk, and your RAM. So just for the sake of review, we've gone ahead and disassembled the system even further, just so we can show you the components. It's no longer recommended that you would try to disassemble your system to this level. You can see there are many different screws of many different sizes. So if you're not extremely careful, you could misplace something or even cause damage to the system. So at this level of disassembly, we have access to the rear hinges behind the screen, and we've taken the entire top part of the chassis off with the keyboard and the touchpad and palm rest to expose the other side of the motherboard. The reasons to get here would be the system RAM slots, which you can see are already occupied, so there's no reason to come add any RAM. Also, we can see our system cooling fans, and we get access to some of the other major system interfaces, such as our wireless card or Bluetooth. This is a good time to point out though, if you ever did want to upgrade some of these components, during the customized ordering process that we have, you can order any of these things to be upgraded and we can take apart the system, perform the upgrades for you and cover all of those changes under a warranty versus self-upgraded components, which are usually something you wanna do outside of your warranty period. That way you don't have to avoid anything. So for those of you who've seen our videos before, you know that when the disassembly is complete, so is the review. So unfortunately, we must take things to a close, but we want to say thank you very much for watching our video. We hope you enjoyed it and found it entertaining and educational. So if you're interested in the ASUS G752 and would like to learn a little bit more, then you can go ahead and visit our website, gentechpc.com, and go to the product page. There you'll find the full system specifications and, of course, the current pricing and availability. If at any point you have any questions about our products or the video, then feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. And if you need more one-on-one -on -one service, then feel free to contact us by phone or email. So once again, we just want to remind everybody, this was Gen Tech PC, and we'll see you next time.